when building the Tron 7 helicopter, I feel that it really helps to actually print on paper pages 9 and 10 of the manual for reference to the uh, hardware used, like bolts and uh, shims and washers and such. For assembling the head, you will need four millimeter uh, hex drivers. Uh, my preference is to use uh, T-handle uh, drivers just because it makes it a lot easier on, on my hands. I'm a 50 year old guy and uh, with arthritis, so uh, it makes it a lot easier to use T-handles compared to the regular uh, uh, drivers. And basically it's just a matter of inserting this here, inserting this there, and it's very easy to undo. See, that's it. It didn't take a lot of effort. Again, just because of this uh, uh, T-handle style. So now I disassemble the head and guess what? So only one side came out. Now this other side is not coming out no matter what I do. Well, you know, the answer is easy, right? You just get one of these really uh, sharp pliers and just grab here and you just turn, right? Please don't do that. That's just going to damage the shaft, okay? So what you really want to do is use the correct tool for this. Now, made in the U.S. of A, the red, white, and blue, and in this case, also green, the grippy. Now, this is a great tool to use, and of course, you know, you can always get the the, the similar tool from... Now, this one has a, a, a four uh, of those tool sizes, uh, I think, 10, 8, 6, and 4. Um, so this one has uh, sizes just uh, uh, 10 and, and 8. But basically this tool is a uh, one-way uh, bearing. So what you do with this is that you insert it uh, this way. All right. Well, I guess I inserted the wrong way. And actually it is the right way. And here, let's see. So I'm a one-way bearing. And I'm actually going to undo this. One, two, three. Boom. There you go. So now it's uh it's done. So I remove this uh, screw, and come on. And guess what? See, the nice thing about this is that this does not damage the shaft at all using uh, one of these one-way bearing uh, uh, tools. When building the head or the tail, it'll in any helicopter, you're going to be using thrust bearings. Um, the thrust bearings have these um, races and you have to be able to tell them apart uh, when it comes to their inner diameter. So one way of telling is that you get uh, your uh, digital um, caliper and you measure the inner diameter. And as we can see here, this one is uh, barely uh, 10 uh, millimeters. All right. And this other one is uh 10.26 or 25 so this is a, it it's a slight uh difference but this one is certainly uh larger than the other um there's an easier way to tell um so we establish that this is the smaller um diameter or internal diameter and when i insert it on the shaft you can see how there's very little wiggle room this one we establish that this is a larger diameter when we insert it on the shaft, see how there is a lot of a uh, wiggle room. Very, very little wiggle room with the small diameter. Lots of wiggle room with this larger internal diameter. All right. So again, larger internal diameter, smaller internal diameter. So I believe it's a lot easier to measure it, uh, uh, the diameter, uh, or tell them apart uh, when resting it on the shaft rather than using the uh, digital uh, the calipers. Now, uh, just for completion, uh, you always, 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 uh, a any helicopter um, uh, that, that uses uh, 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 earth physics, uh, you uh, always insert the larger, what we establish is the uh, large inner uh, diameter uh, race into the uh, blade grip uh, first, all right? 
and then um, and then you uh, uh, of course insert the um, the actual bearings. Uh, now there's a little controversy on the, you know which way do you insert the be uh, the bearing? Uh, do you insert it uh, so that um, I guess a little cup is facing the inside? And then the theory here is that the, as the uh, head or the tail rotates, the grease here. Uh, will be uh, at least in theory uh, retained uh, inside the the cup. Uh, however, um, uh, the it, it seems that the, there's a little controversy now, in that um, uh, the recommendation seems to be to insert the um, uh, cage so that the the actual cup is facing away from the center. So in other words. Uh, um, in, in, in this case here, the, assuming this is the, the grip we're going to use, the insert the um, cage so that the flat part is uh, facing uh, 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 center and the actual uh, cup uh, aspect is uh, uh, facing the uh, actual blades themselves. And that's actually what I'm going to uh, how I'm going to be inserting these uh, this thrust bearing cage on this uh, helicopter so basically like so and after I grease it of course and of course uh, uh, the lastly uh, you insert the uh, what we establishes the uh, smaller inner diameter uh, rays and of course you insert it with the with the rays not the the flat part but the the actual uh, groove part uh, facing the uh, the bearings. For greasing the thrust bearings, I have used many uh, lubes in the past, and they all actually work pretty well. Um, I I think uh, uh, years ago I started using this uh, the TriFlow uh, synthetic grease. It, it, it worked really well. I never had any problems with it. Eventually, I uh, switched to the uh, Boto lube. And again, it's hard to read the name here, but uh, the Boto Lube uh, uh, just worked really great. Uh, and I, again, never had any problems with it. Uh, my preference now is to use the uh, this uh, Gear Lube uh, from a, a, a dry fluid, and uh, it has a, a like a little um, a ball inside. I guess like a almost like a rattle can, you know, a paint can, and then you have to shake it really well. But the, the reason why I prefer to use uh, the um, gear lube is just, it, it just, it is less messy. And that's, uh, it just, um, let me see, it's here starting to work now. See the, whoops, there you go, that's a, well, that was a mess. But generally, once you get it started, it's not as messy as uh, some of the other uh, lubes, okay? And, um, and uh, I just let it sort of dry okay in place and once it dries it just i mean it just works uh, um it just it's just not as messy and uh, i just don't like mess um uh, certainly this is more expensive than the other uh, lubes uh, but uh, i'm very very happy with it once i am done lubing the thrust bearings uh, not only the cage but also the the races i let this uh, uh, dry uh, and uh, probably takes uh, about five ten minutes or so to, to dry and then I uh, will insert them in, in the blade grips before inserting the dampeners inside the hub uh, you really need to use grease uh, my preferred grease for the dampeners is a uh, triflow uh, clear synthetic grease that I've been using uh, for years I don't like getting grease on my hands so I uh, wear gloves you know I just you know a little finicky like that so um, uh, I first um, um, loop the inside of the of the hub. All right, from um, so this side here, um, and you know, you just want to go too cheap, you know, here with the the grease. Uh, so you get just a little more. Um, so again, uh, grease uh, both sides. Okay. Um, and then after that, the way we insert the um, uh, these uh, dampeners, uh, we insert the uh, green ones uh, first. Um, so here, I'm just gonna get them like really, really greasy. And 
now that I am satisfied that these uh, green dampeners are uh, pretty uh, greased up, I just uh, insert them and they should go in, you know, pretty easily. All right. Same thing for the other side. And now we're going to work on the uh, black dampeners. Now that I have the black dampeners uh, greasy, um, I will insert them inside the hub. And kind of do this uh, here as well. All right. So that was easy. That's what they look so like. I'm going to insert the uh, thrust bearings onto the uh, blade grip. So these uh, these two here are the, the large inner diameter uh, thrust bearings. So I'm going to insert them first. And you know how I'm very finicky about the touching grease with my hand. So I'm actually going to use a wooden skewer like you get at your favorite uh, grocery store. Now that I inserted the large inner diameter uh, inner rays uh, onto the uh, blade grip, I'm going to um, insert the actual uh, ball bearings and again I'm going to insert it um, using the um, I guess this is kind of hard to tell here but this would be the uh, flat part of the of the cage and I uh, got it out of my hands I hate this um, anyway so I'm gonna insert it uh, this way here all right so that the um, so you can actually see uh, the cup um, facing out all right and now I'm I'm going to insert the um, this will be the uh, uh, small uh, inner diameter rays and of course I have to insert it uh, facing the um, uh, the ball bearings and yep so here we go and I will do the same for the other side. So now that I inserted the thrust bearings on both uh, blade grips, I need to use uh, these uh, uh, washers. So there's four of them, but we're only gonna use one per uh, blade grip. So dump one, dump the other there, and you know, kind of a, I guess center them a little bit, all right? I don't know if you can see that well on the camera, but they're pretty, pretty, pretty centered. And that's it for now. And then we insert the two radial bearings onto the blade grips. So radial bearing one, radial bearing number two, and we're done with this. At this point, I'm going to uh, clean the uh, threads in the main shaft or uh, the spindle shaft with a Q-tip and uh, this uh, denature alcohol. Uh, yeah, I just kind of uh, dip the Q-tip. I clean this uh, uh, the threads here. As you can see, I already kind of pre-cleaned them, so I kind of cheated. But uh, basically, I just clean all the, the, the crud and do it a few times and, until the the um, Q-tip uh, is, is clean, all right? Now I am going to apply my trusted uh, oil-tolerant blue Loctite 243 to uh, the, the threads of the spindle using um, a toothpick that you get at the uh, regular grocery store. So I applied blue Loctite to both the uh, the threads inside the spindle shaft as well as the bolt itself. So now I'm just gonna thread the uh, bolt onto the spindle shaft. And this doesn't have to be uh, like a, a super uh, tight uh, 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 fit at this point. This is just um, uh, to get it uh, uh, set up for the next uh, step, okay? So this is not super tight, but uh, it's in. At this point, I'm going to insert the spindle shaft onto one of the blade grips that I set up with, with ball bearings earlier in the video. And it was just, you know, just insert, okay? Uh, and here the shaft just went right through the, uh, uh, the first blade grip. At this point, I'm going to insert uh, a shim, and then I will grease up one of uh, these uh, dampeners this is a, a actual hard POM uh, dampener. I will grease it up and insert it. Now that I inserted this third or outermost dampener onto the feathering shaft, I am going to insert the feathering shaft uh, support onto the uh, hub uh, facing this way. Then I will insert the shaft, feathering shaft, onto the uh, hub 
and let's see and hopefully it's uh, greased enough so that it should go pretty easily and it did actually so it pulled uh, the dampeners but it's all right we'll just you know put push the dampeners up uh, back in and we're good now I am going to insert the third or outermost super hard uh, dampener onto this end and this is greased by the way and followed by the last uh, or fourth uh, shim and yeah, we're done with this part I need to clean off the excess uh, grease of this uh, end of the feather now that I fastidiously uh, cleaned the threads on the uh, feathering shaft I am just going to insert the uh, blade grip that we assembled earlier uh, with um, bearings onto this shaft and it should be pretty should go in pretty easily all right and it did so at this point I uh, applied the uh, Loctite to both the bolt and the uh, inner threads of the spindle shaft. So now it's just a matter of uh, inserting the bolt onto the shaft, screwing this baby in. Now this is where having a T-handle uh, style um, hex drivers make this job so much easier. Okay, so you can actually uh, tighten uh, the bolts, okay, without uh, hurting your hands too much, all right? And here I just apply pressure here for a couple of seconds, all right? And yeah, I'm applying pressure on, on both uh, sides. And I think we're done. All right, so I'm going to let go of both of, um, of my uh, drivers. And you know what? This actually feels really good. Um, uh, it, it, it doesn't fall on its own uh, weight, uh, the, the grips, uh, but they feel super, super smooth and there is no play. So the um, uh, preload, if you will, is actually um, excellent. I mean, I can't take them apart. Okay, I'm, I'm pulling, okay, and pushing and, and, and it's just that uh, there's no play whatsoever. And uh, this is just phenomenal.